Okay, hello, I'm gonna give myself a tiny second to say this because, if I'm being honest, I didn't think I would ever get to. Daniel Bryan is going to wrestle again. Yes! 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 I've done news, I've done rumours, I've done reports, I've done speculation, and every single time the line was, his doctors say he's fine, but WWE aren't gonna clear him. And then, last night, f me out of absolutely nowhere, they did. So, now what? I mean, we can safely say he's going to be doing something at WrestleMania with Shane and Owens and Sami Zayn because he's already up to his nuts in that storyline. But beyond that one match, there's not really all that much mileage in it. That means that we get with an entirely straight face to think about upcoming marquee matches for him in a WWE ring. So, my name is Adam Cleary and it brings me untold happiness to say that these are 10 dream opponents for Daniel Bryan's return. Number 10, Finn Balor. I mean, easiest list I'm ever going to do this. Finn Balor is an incredible wrestler who can tell fantastic in-ring stories, but has not as yet had a serious run on the main roster with somebody on his level. Now, no disrespect to Bray Wyatt or to Kane, but he's not had a good feud since his debut because for varying reasons he simply hasn't had the chance. The one-off with Styles was great, yes, and this whole thing with The Miz and Rollins looks like being very, 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 very good, but he has been spinning his wheels as a singles competitor for pretty much a year now. So, and this is pretty much gonna be my argument for every single entry, just put him with Brian for a bit and watch the two of them make something magic. Hey, you can even use this to pull the trigger on Balor Club's inevitable heel turn and have shades of Brian versus the entire Wyatt family again. Number nine, Johnny Gargano. One that would definitely be in the exhibition match category here, but Johnny Wrestling versus American Dragon. Brian is still considered to be in the modern era and by modern standards, WWE's best pure wrestler. I mean, the dude tapped human balloon Batista in the main event of WrestleMania with running knees and a ground submission. There has arguably never been a bigger achievement for a technical wrestler. Gargano is considered by some to be the heir apparent to Bryan's throne. I mean, he's small, incredibly skilled. He can sell a beating like nobody else. The man has more heart in him than Sonny circa 1997. He's also the last recipient of a five-star match in WWE, which you could argue is the one achievement that eluded Brian during his first run with the company. Like, look, I admit there's no, like, obvious storyline way to do this, and they couldn't really build a feud, but just, Christ, do the whole Nakamura Zane thing again. Just stick them together for half an hour and just watch. Number eight, Samoa Joe. Bit of a throwback, this one, but one that will definitely still be brand new to the vast majority of the WWE audience. So yes, it has been done before, but in the time since, the two of them have gone from being two of the most exciting young wrestlers in North America to two of the legitimately greatest on the entire planet. Joe as the monster heel, Brian as the ultimate underdog, right itself. If the plan is ever to stick Brian back in a world title picture, Joe would be the perfect person to go through to do it. He could target his neck, he could work on all of his injuries. It would be the perfect feud to prove that Brian could still hang with the most vicious members of the roster. Number seven, Pete Dunn. All right, so admittedly, Pete Dunn hasn't yet established himself as a big name in WWE. He tends to only crop up on tapings of NXT or the occasional takeover, but there is a wonderful, wonderful story to be told about him and Daniel Bryan. All right, so humor me this one ludicrously big statement. Pete Dunne and Daniel Bryan are the yin and yang twin sons of William Regal's wrestling career. Ah, uh, hear me out, they were both trained by him. They both take inspiration from his brutal striking and his technical ground styles. They both pay deliberate tribute to him by wearing his famous burgundy color scheme. It's just that one is a force for good and one is a force for evil. Daniel Bryan looks in the mirror and he sees reflected back at him, Pete Dunne. He sees everything he nearly became during the whole no phase. Likewise, Pete Dunne looks in the mirror and he sees Daniel Bryan. He sees how weak he would become if he cared about what anybody else thought of him. 
you want to see that. Number six, Braun Strowman. Nice short entry. This one, Braun Strowman is absolute gold at the moment. Will probably be for the foreseeable future and nobody in wrestling makes the whole big versus small gimmick seem more believable than Daniel Bryan. The promos, the build up, the actual match, everything about that would be great. Or, I don't know, maybe drop this whole Shane, Sammy, Big Kev love triangle thing and just stick Daniel Bryan in as Braun Strowman's partner at WrestleMania. Yes, you're absolutely correct. That would make zero sense whatsoever, but show me one person who says they would not be into that and I will show you a f***ing liar. Number five, Chris Jericho. So, want to know how many televised one-on-one -on -one matches there have ever been between Chris, the greatest of all time Jericho, and Daniel, the greatest of all time Brian? Two, ever, 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 two. And one of them was the very first episode of NXT. Crazy, really, to think the two guys who have worked the gimmick of being the greatest ever have never actually found themselves in a proper long-running feud. But, 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 if the Kenny Omega match proves anything, it's that it's not too late. There's an obvious storyline here, and with this whole New Japan run, there is huge worldwide interest in watching that match. Plus, and whisper it, it wouldn't even need to happen in WWE, would it? Number four, AJ Styles. All right, let's get serious. Daniel Bryan is back. Daniel Bryan is on SmackDown. Daniel Bryan is a former world champion and Daniel Bryan would single-handedly sell thousands of tickets and network subscriptions if they put him in a title match. The fact is there is nobody currently in WWE who has better filled the hole left by Daniel Bryan. Not as a character, don't get me wrong, Styles doesn't work the whole underdog thing, they have very, very different gimmicks, but in so much as he's not your typical Vince guy, but he remains at the very top of the tree through sheer quality of match. Putting the two of them together to contrast their different styles would be a thing of absolute beauty. Both flying around the ring, both trading strikes and kicks and swapping submission holds. It is WWE's most direct route to its next five-star match. Plus, if you're looking for a story here, just paint Styles as the heel. Give him a chip on his shoulder about how he's been carrying the company and picking up the pieces after Brian just walked out with a load of alleged injuries. Like, it, it writes itself. Number three, Brock Lesnar. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure on this one. If you take all the individual pieces, then yes, it is technically a dream match, but so was Brock versus Styles, and so was Brock versus Joe, and they just both ended up being like your atypical valiant squash. But it's still Daniel Bryan, isn't it? A man for whom the odds of the win or the size of the opponent matter not one bit. Like, we didn't really believe they were going to put Styles over Lesnar or put Joe over Lesnar, but they could conceivably put Daniel Bryan over. I mean, especially with all the momentum he's going to be carrying from his return. Yes, I know there's a very, very good chance he's about to go into WrestleMania and get beaten by Roman Reigns, and then we'll not see him again for possibly years. But remember, these are dream matches, so reality is merely a bonus. So yes, anyway, I couldn't personally decide whether or not Brock Lesnar was worthy of inclusion in a list of dream matches, but thankfully, that's what I've got you guys for, and sure, yeah, close enough. Number two, Shinsuke Nakamura. I'll cut the foreplay here because I'm sure we can all imagine precisely how good in ring this match would be. So I'll just skip to the part where I say that Shinsuke Nakamura personally considers one of his all time dream matches to be Daniel Bryan. I mean, as unlikely as it must have seemed at the time, he has hinted that one of the reasons he signed with WWE in the first place was just, just in case, just in case they actually cleared Daniel Bryan. Now that feeling is more than mutual, which means individually they have both been planning this match for five years, maybe more. Pff, holy sh**. <laughs> if Shinsuke Nax does walk out of WrestleMania WWE Champion, then, well then yes, it would make more sense to feed him like a, a Rusev or an Owens for his first major title defense, but later in the year, maybe like, I don't know, autumn-ish, it might be time to start planting the seeds for Shinsuke Nakamura versus Daniel Bryan, and just, wow. <laughs> Number one, The Miz. The 23rd of February, 2010, NXT season one, episode one, world heavyweight champion Chris Jericho takes on young rookie Daniel Bryan and beats him. 
At the culmination of the match, Brian's signed pro, The Miz, dives into the ring and beats the living hell out of him. In the preceding eight years, the two have just orbited each other, but have only ever met one-on-one -on, -one on pay per view once. Night of Champions 2010, when Daniel Bryan took the Miz's United States title. They are, in my opinion, admittedly, the ultimate contrast in modern wrestling. On the one hand, you've got The Miz, a quintessential WWE guy who was plucked from one of their own vanity projects, given this ridiculous main event push and realistically knows nothing about the wrestling world outside of big arenas and just what Vince McMahon has told him. But then you've got Daniel Bryan, a man who probably came out of the womb doing the running knees, who has shattered every single bone in his body in gyms and bingo halls across the world, who's fought tooth and nail to be recognized as one of the greatest of his generation, and this gives them such unbelievable chemistry. Now, don't get it twisted, like even these days, The Miz isn't even on the same planet as Daniel Bryan in terms of being a technical wrestler, but who else in the entire industry delivers a program better than, better than he does right now? On the one hand, you've got one of the best wrestlers in the world inside the ring, and on the other, you've got one of the best wrestlers in the world outside the ring. There's a case you could make for both of them being number one in those respective categories, and that means The Miz versus Daniel Bryan, for all the other greats they have on the roster, is the feud they need to do. I want you to, actually, but let me move all this. I want you to look me in these pretty blue eyes and tell me why this match shouldn't main event WrestleMania next year. That's what I thought. So there you are, 10 absolute wet dream matches for Daniel Bryan's return to WWE. And in truth, I could have done this an hour long. And I might as well do one for the indies as well at some point because lol, Kenny, lol, Okada, lol, Cody, lol, Zack Sabre Jr. But let's have a little bit of fun, shall we? Let me know who you want to see Daniel Bryan working with. God, that feels really good to say by leaving a comment below. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. It's whatculture.com for all your content needs. You can follow us on Twitter at whatculturewwe. Until next time, my name's been Adam Cleary, and yes. <laughs> oh, oh, wasn't that something? Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe below. And also, the people who made this lovely video, they're appearing right here. But if you're thinking to yourself, I want to see more content, Jules, then why not look above my head, as there probably is some. I don't know. I can't see it. Until next time.